Okay, question today is how to study for long periods of time. So this is a question about how to study so that you don't, you know, burn out so quickly or get tired too quickly. Long study sessions, okay? How does that work? How do you, like you see a lot of your friends perhaps in the library and, you know, your place of work or whatever, and they're, they're working like, you know, four hours, five hours at a time. Maybe they're working like 12, 15 hours in the day itself. And you're like, how do you do that? How do you not run out of energy? How do you just keep going for so long and not lose focus and not get hungry and not get tired? How does that work? Are you superhuman or something? What is that, right? So here's my few tidbits about how to get that long study session in. So the main part is the, the focus, right? Because if you break that focus, it's incredibly hard to stay at such a high level of productivity, right? So usually if you draw a graph of like how productive you feel, you need to like ramp up a little bit in terms of how you feel in terms of how to get to that top place of like, I feel amazing in terms of focus here. Let's say this Y axis is focus, you need to ramp up to that focus level, right? And usually people can go along for a little bit and then they feel like they, they drain off or maybe it goes up and down, it kind of, you know, does weird things, but they usually see it go down a bit right over time or very quickly right so too soon would be the time that they they see it go down right whereas the people that we look up to the people that we see okay i want to be like really productive for long periods of time this is what we see them doing right they see them going pretty stably along there maybe it might like if you zoom in a little bit more it might kind of wiggle a little bit up and down but for the mo most part it stays stable right and they get really, really focused and really, really like, when you see them working, you're like scared to disturb them because they're really, they're that zoned in. They're plugged, they're wired in, whatever they said in the, the social media, the social, that movie, right? When they said, oh, I'm wired in, right? When they were wired in, they had their headphones in, they were on the laptop, they were coding, whatever. And the phrase in the movie was they were like wired in or plugged in or whatever, right? That was the phrase that they used for someone who was super focused, right? So how do you get that? How do you get it to go beyond, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour into these ridiculously long seeming areas and times of study, time periods of study, right? So focus, how do we get that focus, right? To get a high level of focus, we need to eliminate distractions. So let me just talk about that for a second. Distractions, okay? Distractions in the modern world involve a lot of technology, okay? Because Fortunately or unfortunately, there's advantages and disadvantages to this. We have a lot of technology around us, right? We have our smartphones, which can ping at any moment. We have our laptops that have notifications on them and things that we can get distracted by on our laptops. We have smartwatches and things like this. We have, you know, Google Home devices. What are those? I don't know what they're called, like home things. Home, I'm just going to call them home things. Right, like Alexas and things like this. Sorry to trigger your Alexa in your house. But all these bits of technology can distract you, like let alone the old bits of technology like TV and things like this. There's ways around this, right? The phone, first of all, right? Let's pick that one out and look at it a little bit deeper, right? There's notifications. So for me on my phone, I have, I don't think I have any app on my phone that has the notifications turned on you can turn them off, right? And that will eliminate most of the distractions. You can make it so that the sound from the notifications don't sound. So my phone's like back there somewhere. And if, even if the notifications were on, they wouldn't make any sound. They wouldn't vibrate. They wouldn't like even light up the screen, right? They, if you go through the settings, you can turn off these things for each app and for each thing, right? Notifications, the, the, the buzzing, the vibrations and the light up of the screen, all those things, you can turn those off, right? So that's notifications. Another thing I like is airplane mode. Airplane mode, because that essentially stops any Wi-Fi or data or anything coming into your phone. So you can't receive phone calls. You can't receive text. You can't receive messages. You can't receive notifications because most of your notifications rely upon the internet, right? Or some kind of signal. Right. So airplane mode is really good if you want to have a quick and easy switch between like a study session and, you know, a leisurely time period. Right. Airplane mode is a good way to focus in that way. My favorite way is just to turn my phone completely off. Right. 
this has worked the best because I'm not even tempted to pick up my phone because it's off and I'm like, okay, I've got I've got to turn it on again, right? Which is a, a friction that we want when we're doing something focused like studying or working like that. If we put friction between us and the distraction, it becomes less of a desirable thing to do. If our phone's turned off, then it is less of a temptation. Like, oh, I've got to turn this phone on to play Angry Birds, right? So I'm not bothered anymore, right? It makes it less tempting, right? That's the phone. The laptop's gonna be pretty similar. There'll be notifications, you know, airplane mode if you want that as well. And well, I guess you need your laptop to do work, so you might not wanna turn it off, but if your work, for example, is just maybe a camera, you're recording a speech, or maybe you're writing something down on a piece of paper, maybe you do wanna turn your laptop off. Right? Maybe you've not even put it to sleep, but just turn it off completely so it takes longer to boot up and you're less distracted by it. Right? These things work for the technology itself. The best thing to do is a combination of this and just put it away. Right? So if your laptop distracts you, put your laptop in a bag in a cupboard. Put your phone in a bag and put it in another room. Right? Charge it in your kitchen or something. Right? Make it so that it's inaccessible or harder to get to it so you, you're able to focus better. Right? Smartwatch, just take that off and put it somewhere. Like I don't, I don't have a smartwatch, so I don't know what the the distractions look like there. I'm assuming they're similar to phones and laptops, so just put them away somewhere. Again, charge it in your kitchen, whatever you can do with that. The home thing, I don't know what that. I don't have one of those, and I have no idea what it does. So, I does it ping? Does it make notifications? If it does, just like turn it off, unplug it. Is it battery powered? I don't think so. And the TV. A similar thing, I don't have a TV in my house, so it's not a distraction. So that might be something that you want to decide about in your life. Do you want the TV in your house? Do you want to be able to just, you know, easily sit down on a sofa and just turn the TV on and distract yourself? I don't, so that's why I don't want a TV in my house. And we just don't have one anyway. So that might be a decision that makes you or helps you do work if you are at home. If you're at the office, obviously they might not have a TV, so it's better for you to do that. Or the library, things like that, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's another thing. Location. So let's scroll down a little bit more. Okay, so what have we talked about so far? Location. So we talked about distractions and focus. So to focus, we need to eliminate distractions, and another thing to do is focus on location, right? So for me, when I was at uni at high school. Location association was the name of the game, right? Location association. That's a fancy word meaning basically I liked associating a certain location with doing work, right? So if I went to the library, I knew that I was there to do work, not just, you know, have a chat or play around or anything like that. I was there to work, right? So for me, library, library, hard word to spell. That equals work and my dorm room, so if I was at university, my dorm was for, you know, <laughs> watching anime, right, basically, which is what I did. Watching anime, eating food, well, just like relaxing, basically, right? That is what I had to associate with the locations in my life, right? So if I went to the library, that was work and I, I might have seen friends there in the foyer and I might have chatted for a bit and if you're, you know, not being a particularly great student, you will go to the study areas and you'll chat in the study areas. But what you really want to do is do work, right? That's why you're there for, right? It's great to see your friends. It's great. I know it's socializing is an important part of your mental health and all that stuff. But after you, you are done with that, right, when you get your work out, then you should say goodbye to your friends. Say, look, I'm going to go to floor three. I'm going to do work there on my own. I'll see you guys later at lunchtime or something like that, okay? So just carve out a time in your day even if your friends are at the library, just to be on your own and do work. Because I can never get work done if I'm, you know, sitting opposite my friend or sitting next to my friend. That just doesn't happen, right? So you'll notice these kind of people who focus for long periods of time will go on their own and do their own work. You might not even see them in the day, right? They may come, come to you at the end of the day and say, oh, I just got 12 hours of work done. And you're like, where were you? Because you didn't see them. They were on their own. That's the whole point, right? So factors there include, you know, friends and being on your own, right? Friends and alone time, which in this case is something that you want. 
So location association, distractions. And the final thing I want to mention is the skill, right? Skill. Excuse me, sorry about that. I'm drinking uh, sparkling water. I'm not just being a pig right now. Um, skill. This is something, a skill you can upgrade over time, right? So don't feel like you're just, you know, never going to be good at this if you can only study for half an hour right now. That will upgrade over time. If you can study for 30 minutes now, that will become 60, right? Which is one hour. And that one hour will become two hours, and that will become three. And that is like the ideal figure, right? Like, I don't see many people working for three hours straight or beyond that, right? Usually after three hours, you might need a break. Depends who you are. and depends what you're doing. If you really love what you're doing, then it can increase to like, you know, four, five, six. But beyond that, it usually you can split those up, right? After six hours, you probably need something to eat or something to drink, right? And then you can do another six hour session if you're really down for that, right? If you're really passionate about what you do, about what you're studying and then... It becomes easier to do. It's not a work task. It's more of a leisure task. It's more of a thing that you look forward to doing and you, the thing that you kind of, you love doing anyway, right? And what we can call that, that love of the thing you do and the, the desire to move forward with it and the desire to like shut out everything in your world, that is called flow, right? So when you get started studying and you just feel this kind of rhythm, this kind of desire to like do more and finish that task is a flow state, right? And so you want to do as much as you can to achieve this flow state as possible because that's going to allow you to work for the longest periods of time that you have found in your life, right? And to do that, you need to do the above things. Eliminate distractions, and have a location association, block off other people, be on your own, and just be able to upgrade that skill over time. Learn to kind of fall in love with it, learn to make it easier for yourself. So to get into the task, make it easy, make it simple, make it fun. All these things will contribute to how much flow you can achieve, right? And the flow state, will affect how much focus you feel, right? So someone with not a great amount of flow, they might, you know, have to ramp up with their study and they, they can go for a little bit, but they just fall down very rapidly. Whereas someone with a better flow state, of someone who enjoys their work, makes it simple and, you know, carves out time to be by themselves, their, their focus, so this y-axis is focus, will decrease but less so. Right? So they can go on for a longer period of time than person A. So person A is here, person B is here. Then you'll be able to go for a lot longer than person A. Right. So with that being said, I think that's everything I have to say about this topic of studying for long periods of time. Right. Long study basically means that you have to focus a bit more. And to do that, you must eliminate distractions. And in today's world, that involves a lot of technology, phones, laptops, smart watches, home pod things, TVs, things like that. There's ways around that just by like turning them off or notifications or airplane mode, different ways to go about that. Location association. So going to a certain location that enables your work to happen a bit better because you associate that location with work. And then being alone with that work so that you have less distractions and upgrading that skill of doing work for longer. And to do that, you must understand what is, sorry, what is most conducive to that flow state. Something that makes it fun, something that makes it easy, something that makes it simple. These things contribute to what it is to flow in that thing, right? I'm sure most commonly people quote this um, phenomenon of flow in sports. So I'm sure you've kind of felt that in the past. I felt it most in practice sessions, right? In basketball when I'm like doing some shooting practice and I, there's just something that just clicks for me and it just becomes fun. And I'm like making more baskets and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm like making more shots, right? Which is what I mean. And it just feels like just everything around me just like completely 
goes to the wayside and I'm just focused on exactly where I need to shoot the ball to score exactly. And it's just, it's a feeling that you don't ever forget because you're just, you shoot the ball with exactly the right form and it goes in very cleanly every single time for like 20 shots in a row and you're like, what's going on? And then it just breaks you out of it because you're like shocked at how like how much in flow you are, you break out of it, right? So just try and stay focused and try and stay in that flow state as much as you can. And that's how you're able to study for long periods of time like that, right? I wouldn't recommend studying for 12 hours in the day. What I recommend personally is studying for, you know, three or four and having a really good focus session. And that's usually better than studying 12 without that flow, without that focus. Right, that's what I recommend. But if you can, if you're able to, and you know that you're productive in each of those hours, then go for it, right? Absolutely. I'm not going to stop people from working hard, okay? If you can work efficiently as well. So with that being said, thanks for submitting that question. I loved answering it. It's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to think about in any area of life. Because because we need focus, we need to work for long periods of time at times, and there's a method to the the madness of working 12, 15 hour shifts that makes it a lot easier. And despite it looking like an amazing thing to the people around you, you will get loads of work done in an easy way, right? So I hope it helps you out. It definitely will um, contribute to longer work times and periods of time in your life so yeah that's all i have to say thanks for watching take care bye bye knowledge is power and the power is yours nice